Hello everyone and welcome to the first game we'll be showing from the second day of the Champions Chester Finals. Wesley So versus Magnus Carlsen. This is the first game. It just finished and like yesterday, uh, Wesley also started with pawn to b3. Uh, but they didn't go in the exact same uh, variation. Wesley already switched it up on move 3. So Wesley starts off with 1b3 and Magnus goes for g6. Same as he did yesterday. And uh, remember, since Magnus once uh, won the previous match, uh, Wesley needs to be, uh, beat him now. Uh, in this match, in a 4 game a match uh, to force um, uh, a third match. So let's see what happens. G6, bishop to b2, knight to f6, and in the previous game, uh, Wesley started with pawn to c4, but here we have pawn to g3, switching it up, sort of the Indian variation of the Nimso Larsen attack, uh, bishop to g7, and now pawn to c4. Uh, we have castles, and now bishop to g2, pawn to d6, and now Wesley goes for pawn to e3, which is very interesting, as you'll see later on. Uh, so Magnus strikes with e5, we have knight to e2, uh, preparing, uh, or rather, it seems like he's preparing to advance the pawn to d4, rook to e8, and now knight b to c3. We have pawn to c6, and now, uh, well, uh, people thought that uh, either Wesley will play d4 here, or he was gonna castle, maybe then play pawn to d4, but no, he played pawn to e4 so he sort of wastes the tempo here by playing pawn to e3 and then to e4 uh, but of course uh, he knows what he's doing and here we have pawn to a6 by Magnus so now Wesley does have uh, full control over the d5 square everything controls that d5 uh, square so it's very unlikely that Magnus will be able to execute d5 so he organizes a different um, uh, central breakthrough he plays a6 and now he wants to challenge Wesley's center with pawn to b5 uh, and okay uh, we have castles here uh, and, uh, well, th there is a game where a4 was played, but castles is a new move, so now already, as of move 10, we have a completely new game. Magnus strikes with pawn to b5, we have pawn to a3, and now knight b to d7. Uh, we have pawn to d3, and Magnus goes for rook to b8. The rook will be very strong here, and uh, also the bishop on b2 is undefended, so Wesley plays rook to b1, and now knight to c5. Just being a menace here, and putting pressure on b3 and d3, uh, bishop back to a1, now the rook also helps out with the defense of the b3 pawn and now b captures on c4 uh, we have b captures rook captures on b1 uh, queen captures and now bishop to e6 and wesley plays rook to d1 uh, in hopes of executing pawn to d4 but it's not going to be easy to do that with the uh, weakening of the c4 and uh, of the c and d4 pawns uh, and okay now magnus has to figure out how to get um, uh, the most out of the position he can either offer a queen trade with queen b8 or maybe something like queen to c7 followed by rook to b8 he goes for the immediate queen trade as magnus uh, most often does we have queen to c2 wesley avoids the queen trade and now queen to b3 now uh, if you don't want to see rook b1 you have to ensure that the trade happens so queen to c1 wesley again declines it but also has to defend the a3 pawn and now magnus goes knight f to d7 uh, we have pawn to d4, uh, for the moment you cannot capture on c4 as the knight on c5 is hanging, but still e captures on d4, knight captures, we have bishop captures, rook captures, now Wesley goes after the d6 pawn as well, uh, but not uh, to be worried as Magnus goes knight to e5, and it looks like you're just giving up the e, uh, d6 pawn for the c4 pawn, but not really, rook captures on d6 is played, but now Magnus goes for knight c to d3, attacks the queen, but also takes care of the b2 square, which means that he kicks away the only defender of the a3 pawn so he traded the d6 pawn for the a3 pawn and now he has the outside past a pawn that he will try to push to victory so queen d1 now wesley offers a queen trade but of course just queen captures on a3 we have pawn to c5 uh, and now we have uh, bishop to b3 putting more pressure on wesley's queen we have queen to f1 and now bishop to c4 the position is already uh, very much winning for magnus but uh, he doesn't want to waste too much time since wesley is uh, uh, has a minute and 24 seconds but here i move like knight to c1 uh, would ensure Magnus a victory since the bishop on b1 bishop on a1 can't really be saved you can play something like knight to b1 in order uh, let's say a queen captures on a1 then queen captures on c1 uh, but now comes knight to e to check and it doesn't matter if the queen captures or not uh, you will pick up the bishop on a1 now the knight is hanging and after you move the queen back now just bishop c2 and that's it you lose a piece here and the game uh, but Magnus went for bishop to c4 now he's threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries so knight to e 
e2 stopping that and now just queen captures on c5 and now uh, grabbing a pawn and now you will start advancing the past a pawn to victory rook to d4 uh, queen to a3 by magnus and now pawn to h3 creating some breathing room for the white king knight to c5 and now queen to c1 now magnus offers uh, sorry now wesley offers a queen trade queen captures we have knight captures and now bishop to b5 so magnus didn't get uh, uh, as much uh, out of the position as it was possible but look at his clock time he's already down to six seconds uh so playing uh completely on increment and wesley also not that great on time he has 30 seconds on the clock we have pawn to f4 uh knight to c4 and now pawn to e5 we have knight to e6 trying to blockade those pawns uh and rook to d7 wesley promotes his uh, rook to a pig but what good will it do him we have pawn to c5 by magnus uh rook to d3 and now pawn to a5 now the past a pawn starts marching forward rook to b3 goes after the bishop uh, but magnus doesn't defend the bishop he just plays rook to d8 uh, with some uh, uh, seven, uh three seconds on the clock uh, uh so rook to d1 check is the threat he wants to go after the knight and here wesley should have traded objectively it's a draw but um, um you know you have to play perfect with uh, very little time on the clock he went for knight to d3 instead and now pawn to a4 this comes with tempo so now he captures and now magnus captures on d3 we have rook to b8 with check king g7 now rook to b1 uh, we have rook captures on g3 grabbing yet another pawn and when wesley saw this he uh, you could see visibly that uh, uh, he was just uh, incredibly frustrated and that he has given up on this game uh, so king to h2 was played attacking magnus's rook rook back to a3 uh, and now pawn to f5 we have g captures on f5 and now rook to g1 now uh, wesley has to uh, rely uh, heavily on tactics maybe to survive this king f8 uh, rook to c1 but you could see it in the way that he was moving the pieces that he uh, you know even even his hands have given up we have knight to e3 uh, bishop to c6 now uh, putting pressure on that a4 pawn but it will do him little good we have knight to d4 attacks the bishop uh, bishop captures on d4 now uh, uh, the, the past c pawn becomes a past d pawn we have bishop to b5 and pawn to f4 now now three of magnus's past pawns are marching forward uh, rook to c8 with check we have a king to g7 and now uh, rook to c7 trying to go after that uh, pawn maybe also e6 will be very nice so rook to a2 with check king to a1 king to h1 and now king to g6 now uh, so if e6 you can simply capture it uh, we have bishop to d3 with check king to g5 and now rook captures on f7 so wesley also creates a pass pawn uh, but uh, magnus is just much faster rook to d2 and now wesley says all right i can't really do anything here now magnus will start pushing the a pawn so i have to give up the bishop in order maybe to try and advance my pass pawn to victory so he plays e6 and the magnus calculates precisely rook captures on d3 and now wesley plays pawn to e7 and now i could ask you to pause the video here but if magnus allowed it, you guys know what the idea here is uh, do you see how black wins the game uh, i'm sure i'm sure you do even without pausing the video as you guys are incredible players uh, of course the idea is rook to d1 check and then you just put the rook on e1 and stop promotion problem is the white king has only one square that is the h2 square and now knight to f1 with check forces the king um, uh, back it doesn't matter where you go to uh, if you go to g2 still rook to e1 if you go to g1 rook to e1 uh, whatever you play so king to g2 was played now rook to e1 and the queening square is covered wesley tried king to f2 uh, attacking the rook uh, but magnus just gives back the knight and says i will keep continue uh, i will keep um, guarding the queening square you can have the knight so there's nothing better wesley takes the knight on f1 now pawn to a3 and the pawn is unstoppable h4 check but magnus doesn't care about it you could even cap it's still winning magnus just plays king to g4 and he was in this position on move 59 uh, that wesley saw resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here so it's a really really tough loss for wesley as it's a um, it's a you know a, a match he was uh, supposed to bounce back in and he starts by losing the first game with white where he chose to pawn to b3 Denzel larson he did it also in the previous match but in that game he was able to get a draw uh, not so uh, lucky today uh, so yeah, here we resign because after a few checks, let's say rook g7 check king f3, uh, there's nothing, you cannot uh, do anything, just um, a2, a1, or even you can just checkmate the white king, doesn't really matter, you can push this pawn, uh, pretty much any move you win 
uh, any move you make uh, will win you the game. And if uh, something like rook to g8, uh, let's say a2, you can even allow queening because then uh, you, you can bring a queen or you can even bring a rook. It will still be checkmate. doesn't matter. Uh, so yeah, and also something very interesting that Pavi said after the game that, um, uh, well, b3, okay, maybe it can be considered a great opening and maybe you can even do wonders with it. It's just not an opening that you will... Uh, that you can use the hostile Magnus against Magnus you need to put constant pressure and you need to constantly be attacking him and maybe then he will break but if you play a slow opening like b3 you pretty much leave it up to him like uh, you say okay uh, uh, this is very flexible I have all the all, all the positions in the world in front of me but that kind of favors Magnus not you uh, so that, that was um, sort of uh, Fabi's uh, idea uh, and it seems that he he is definitely uh, on point there uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see what happens in the rest of the match. And will uh, Wesley be able to bounce back? We'll cover those games as well. Uh, I would like to thank Robert Arathun, Sam's John, Tordes Farm, uh, The Night Before Christmas. Good luck on Law School Finals, KMV, and Benjamin Hoiberger for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.